Hello, DBC family. And to all our viewers, welcome once again to our online worship service. As we start our service this morning, let us uh, listen and meditate first on our devotional. It is entitled, God Brings New Life Out of the Fire. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 28, it says, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. How you handle pain is a great witness to the world. When you trust God in spite of suffering, you'll point unbelievers to Him. Frankly, you and I aren't much of a witness when life is good. Anyone can serve God during those times, but tough times are a different story. Remember the story of Daniel's friend being tossed into the fire. They trusted God and He rescued them in a miraculous manner. These guys impressed the king with their faith and the king was the most powerful emperor at that time. The king said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angels and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. King Nebuchadnezzar recognized that these guys were willing to defy his order and risk death because they trusted God. What are you willing to die for? If you don't know what you're willing to die for, you'll never truly live. You'll only exist. The same is true with us. Sometimes, God brings new life to others because they see us trust Him through the fire. Praise be to God our Lord because He has reminded us that every suffering in life is under the sovereign will and purpose of God. God knows our capacity and limitations. These problems and sufferings God allowed to come in our lives is within our capacity to bear and guided by God. And how we behave and react to these difficulties is our testimony to others. If we question God and get mad at Him, it only shows that we lack faith and trust in God. That's why we need to stand up in our faith and trust the promises of God. Let us hold on to it and live our lives confidently, bearing the truths and promises of God in our hearts and let it manifest in our way of life. Remember, no pain, no gain. No test, no testimony. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we acknowledge you as our loving and gracious God. You are sovereign in all things, and we trust in you. Our lives are in your hands. Lord, today, we seek your will upon our lives. We believe, O God, that all these events that are happening in our lives were allowed by you to test us, to teach us a lesson, and to display your power and the truthfulness of your word. We continue to ask for your intervention upon the present crisis that we are facing right now. Lord, Take away this COVID-19 virus and heal the world. Preserve the health of our frontliners who are working and risking their health and lives for the good of everyone. Protect also their families, O Lord. 
heal those who have been affected of this virus and help us to control the transmission of this virus. We ask for your healing upon our sick members. Heal Mami Rose Serna, O God, from her hip injury. Free her from pain, Lord, and restore her strength. You are our healer in the past. We believe you are the same God who will heal us today. Heal my sister Michelle Lozada and Gladys Ann Waikoko from COVID-19 infection. Restore their strength, O Lord. We also ask for your healing for Aryan May Heradura, the friend of the Adige family, and Eva Poras, the aunt of Brother Richard Lariosa. Heal them, O God, from cancer. Remove these cancer cells in their body and strengthen Aryan from the chemotherapy she is undergoing right now. We pray for Sister Jordi Varon, O God. There is a mass found in her neck. We pray that the result of her biopsy is not malignant, O Lord, and heal her, O God, in the name of Jesus. Encourage us today, Lord, from your word. Speak to us in a personal way. Prepare our hearts as we listen to your word and as we sing songs of praise to you. Protect us from the destructions of the enemy so that we can worship you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Good morning, church. Psalm 66 verses 1 to 4 says, Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of His name. Make His praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Today is indeed a good morning because today we are given the privilege to worship the Lord corporately as a church through songs of praises, worship, and thanksgiving. And through these songs, we are reminded of who God is and what He has done. Amen? Amen. And church, as we start our worship proper this morning, why don't we reflect on this verse? Romans chapter 8 verse 28 gives us a picture of God's sovereignty and control. This verse assures those who love God and are doing their very best to obey Him despite sad, bad, wicked, or evil things will touch their lives, God will use them to ultimately bring about good both in their lives and in the world. Indeed, God is in complete control of all the molecules in the universe at every moment. And everything that happens is either caused or allowed by Him for His own perfect purpose. So church, whatever you face in life right now, you can take comfort in the fact that God is sovereign. So why don't we have our responsive reading, church, which is taken from Psalm 34. Verses 1 to 22. I will read the letters in yellow and you will respond by reading the letters in blue. Shall we start? I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. And you will respond. angel of the Lord and camps around those who fear him and he deliver, delivers them taste and see that the Lord is good 
Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. Fear the Lord, you His saints, for those who fear Him lack nothing. And you will respond. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and His ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. And you will respond. And all together, the Lord redeems His servants. No one will be condemned who takes refuge in Him. Why don't we put our hands together and sing this church? Hallelujah! Yeah. 
You know, church, as I come to think of all the challenges that the whole world is facing now, I am reminded by the sovereignty of our God that He is in control. He is able to help us, save us, sustain us from whatever we are going through. And that He is able to work for the good of those who love Him. He is our trustworthy God. He is our faithful God, our Savior, and our very present help in times of trouble. In Him, we can find peace. Church, you may have a problem that completely overwhelms you. You may be at your wit's end. You may not know where to turn or what to do. It may be a family problem, a personal problem, financial problem, or a problem of sickness or disease. But let me tell you this truth about God, church. God loves us, and His love for us is constant. And in His constant love for us, we can be assured of His peace and protection as we walk in the faith and in obedience to the Lord. The God who heard and delivered King Jehoshaphat, King David, Joseph, Daniel, Abraham, and all his people from their enemies and battles is the very same God who will hear us and who will deliver us from all our battles if we will just obey Him and trust in Him. For our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh God, we just want to be with you.
comfort when I need. I trust in you, this Lord
Good morning, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ. Praying all is well with you. Nagaampo ako nga kamo na sa maayong kahimtang. Padayon lang kita sa atong pagsalig, pagampo o pagsimba o pagalagad sa atong makagagahong, may gugmaon o maluluyon nga Diyos amahan, nga kanunay nagauban ka nato. Let us pray. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Savior, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, our Father, that you have given us once more this opportunity to come together through online worship service. We pray that your Holy Spirit will bring to us your word and enable us to receive your word gladly in our hearts. May you, O God, continue to bless your people even as they worship you in spirit and in truth. May you, O God, minister to them according to their needs. For those who have need your healing touch, may you heal them. And those who need provision for their daily needs, may you provide for them as you promise. And continue, Father, to protect us all from this threat of COVID-19. Allow us to go through these difficult times with peace and assurance that comes from your promises that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our text this morning is taken from Mark chapter 10. 28 to 31. Then Peter spoke up. We have left everything to follow you. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age homes, brothers and sisters, mothers, children and fields, along with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last and last first. The title I have given to the message this morning, The Promises of God We Can Always Count On. The passage we have chosen today speaks of God's great promises about the future for all who follow Jesus wholeheartedly. What Jesus meant by the words, many who are first will be last and last first, is that there will be many surprises in heaven. Heaven's value system is far different from earth's value system. Those who are esteemed and respected in this world like the rich young ruler, which is the context of this passage, may be frowned upon by God. The opposite is also true. Those who are despised and rejected in this world, like the disciples, may, in fact, be rewarded by God. Don't get caught up in the world's way of ranking things. It's too prone to error. Those who are first in the opinion of others, or first in their own opinion, may be surprised to learn on Judgment Day they are last in God's opinion. Today, let me share with you on the great promises of God that we can always count on. And these great promises of God are promises about our future as followers of Jesus Christ. In times of uncertainty, when the future seems hazy, when darkness and gloom paints the horizon, especially as COVID-19 looms continually to threaten human lives, we need a penetrating light to give us hope to survive and thrive. You see, without this kind of light that penetrates the darkness of our path ahead, then this gloom will be our doom. And there is no better and powerful light that can best penetrate darkness 
than the promises of God. Amen? And there is no period in time that we need more of this light than this time. We need to take hold of the promises of God. Sa panahon sa kangitngit, ug walay kasiguruhan sa umaabot ang mga masaligang saad sa gino. Kinahanglan na ito makuptan kay ang mga saad sa Diyos mo'y atong suga nga makahatag ka na ito o kahayag o kasiguruhan o paglaom nga makalabang kita sa umaabot luyo sa mangitngit nga panahon. I have a couple friend who I always thank and praise the Lord for because of their thoughtfulness and generosity towards me and my wife. At the start of the lockdowns and the quarantines of this pandemic, this couple promised me and my wife to bring lunch for us every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I have known this couple for many years already, and they have been always true to their promises. Because my confidence in them have been established, as I remember their faithfulness in fulfilling their promises in the past, Their words have become a beacon of light that gives hope and encouragement to me and my wife when Monday, Wednesday, and Friday come. For they always come bringing delicious lunch for us without faltering. If this couple's faithfulness to fulfill their promises brought light of hope and encouragement to us, much more can we count on on the promises of God. To light up and brighten for us our dark horizon in order that we can have security even in times of uncertainty. Last Sunday, I have shared with you on how we can receive the promises of God. Today, let us start to take hold of some of the promises of God for our future. For how can we receive the promises of God if we don't know them? And if we do know them, we must take hold of them and claim them for us, for ourselves to experience the promises of God in our lives. It is said that there are 7,000 promises of God for us given in the Bible. And many of these promises have something to do with our future. Now part of our lives are already past. Since they are of the past, then we cannot do anything about them anymore. In other words, your past is behind you. What we have now is the present and the rest of our lives lies in the future. In other words, you're going to spend the rest of your life in the future. However, in these uncertain and dark times, we need the promises of God to bring and carry us to that future. Now, there are two things about the future we need to understand. First, you don't know what it is going to be. And second, you cannot control it. Since you don't know the future and have no control over it, looking ahead can be scary. And because looking at the future can be scary, I am definitely interested in what God has to say about my future. Don't you? You know, one of the reasons why we have worries, it is because we want to control the future, but we cannot. Now, what does the future hold for the follower of Jesus Christ? I'd like to share with you four facts about your future. One, God knows everything that will happen in your life. Do you believe that? That God knows everything everything that will happen in your life? You see, God is never taken by surprises. Nothing surprises God. Why? Because God is omniscient, meaning He is all-knowing. In Psalm 139, in the New Century Version, it says there, Lord, You have examined me and know all about me. You know when I sit down and when I get up. You know my thoughts before I think them. You know where I go and where I lie down. You know everything that I do. Lord, even before I say a word, you already know it. 
You are all around me, in front and in back, and have put your hand on me. Your knowledge is amazing to me. It is more than I can understand. Ow! Do you see these words describing our God and how He knows everything about us? It's quite scary, but at the same time, it's very comforting and encouraging that we have a God who watches over us and knows everything about us. He is ahead of us. He was be before us, all around us. Wow! What a great God we serve. God is timeless. He sees the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. It is like watching a parade up above a helicopter. Up in the sky, in the helicopter, you can see the whole parade from beginning to the middle and to where it is heading. The same with God. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is eternal. He is timeless. Hebrews 4.13 in the New International Version, nothing, it says there, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before His eyes. Brethren, you and I cannot hide any secrets from God. Oh, that's scary. But again, it is very comforting. In Psalm 139 verse 16, in, in today's English version, it says there, The days allotted to me had all been recorded in your book before any of them ever began. Wow! That's why abortion is sin. Because even in the womb of our mothers, God has already allotted to us the days that, are, that we are to live in this life. And everything is recorded there even before we begin living. Second fact about our future is that God's plan for my future is good. Do you like that? God knows everything about us. And not only that, God's plan for us, for our future is good. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says there, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. This is the plan of God for us. Don't you like this? I'm sure you do. You see, God thinks of your future more than you think of your future. God has thought far more about your life than you ever have. Can I miss God's plan and good purpose for my life? If you ask that question, yes, of course. How? How do we miss God's plan and good purpose for our lives? When you start singing the song, I did it my way. What do I mean by that? Yes, we can mean, what I mean by that is that we can miss God's plan and good purpose for our lives if and when you and I choose our way, our own way apart from God. And we sing the song, we did it our way. I know what God says about sex. But I don't want to do it His way. I want it to do it my way. I know what God says about money. But I want to use my money, the money, my way. There is only one thing that causes you to miss the purpose for which you were created for. And that is if you act like an ape. You know what an ape is? Look at these pictures. This is an ape, and it stands for arrogant, prideful, and egotistic. When you act like an ape, you think you know better than God. But you know what? You cannot miss God's plan and purpose for your life 
if you really desire it, if you really want to experience God's plan and purpose for your life, you can. All you have to do is to give your life completely to Jesus. This is fact number three. God knowing our future. I will be blessed if I choose to trust Christ and obey Him. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Here, look at this verse. It says here that God has blessed us with all the blessings in heaven. And where do we get and find these blessings? If we are related or in union with Jesus Christ. That's why we have for us to experience the plan and purpose of God for our lives. We need to give our lives to Jesus Christ. In Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, it says that today I am giving you the choice between life and death, between blessings or curses. I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. So choose life. Then you and your children will live. To choose life is to invite Jesus Christ to come into your life and make him your Savior and your Lord. Will you do that today? Simply say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. I surrender my life to you and I invite you into my life to be my Savior and Lord. Lord, I surrender everything to you because I want to experience your wonderful plan and purpose for my life. In your name I pray. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, inviting Christ into your life, today will be the beginning of how you are going to experience God's wonderful plan for your life. Fact number four about your future is that God will be with you every step of the way. Hebrews 13 verse 5 and 6 says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Take note of these words underlined. Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So you, we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. We should not be afraid. We should not focus on material things or be anxious if we have less material things. No, because God has promised, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Do not be afraid. What can people do to me? I may not know the future. But one thing I know for sure, I am not going to face it alone. For God is with me and will be with me all the way. One plus God equals the majority. And if God likes me and I like me, but you don't like me, then that's your problem. I may not feel God, but He is for real with me. There are many things in life that I don't see and feel but are real. Like protons, electrons, atoms, molecules, radio waves, TV waves, internet waves are passing through the air space right now. You don't have to feel these things or see them for them to be real. They are real in the same way that God is real and right now He is with you and will bless your life. This is called the faithfulness of God. Every fear is a misunderstanding of who God is and what He has promised. Because if you knew what God is really like and you knew what God has promised, 
Brethren, you will not be afraid. There are six amazing promises of God given to us for us to take hold of concerning our future. I want you to listen carefully because these promises of God will serve as our light as we face the darkness. These, these uh, promises of God will give us encouragement and hope as we move towards the future. Promise number one, God promises to guide you when you are confused. He promises to guide us, you and me, when we are confused. One thing you can predict about your future is that you will have lots of choices and decisions to make. And some of these choices may be difficult and some are confusing. Will I take this job? Will I live in this city or that city? Will I marry this person? Will I go to that place? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord, not on yourself, but in the Lord with all your heart. Who do you really trust deep down in your heart? How much are we to trust God? With all our hearts, it says, not part of our hearts. Never rely on what you think you know. Remember the Lord in everything you do, and He will show you the right way. Underline that word. He will show you the right way if you trust Him completely. Why trust God with all your heart? He created you. You can trust Him because He created you. He knows you. He formed you. He, know, he knows how you work. And he, he knows what He has given you for you to do well. He created you. He sustained you for you to exist. He is merciful to you that He saved you when you lost your way. And above all, He demonstrated His love for you when He gave His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, for you. He loves you very, very much. And if God did all these things and cared that much about you, then why can't you completely trust Him? The will of God is in the Word of God. And we can find His will as we meditate on His Word. And right there in His Word, He tells us that He will guide us when we are confused. Second promise that God is giving us is that He promises to help you and me when we are tempted. Another thing you can predict about the future is that you will face temptations and many of these temptations are the same ones you have already encountered. Hopefully, you get better resisting them when you face the same temptation along your way. There are bad news, good news about temptations. The bad news about temptation is this. You are going to be tempted the rest of your life. Some think and say, maybe I will reach a point in my Christian life where I can say, I am not tempted anymore. Di na ko madutlan og temptasyon. Wala na yung temptasyon mo dool sa ako. You hope that you will reach that point. But to tell you frankly, the longer you are in the faith, the greater the temptation. Oh, makahadlok mana, pastor. Hadlok tinood. But that's the bad news. But there is a good news about temptation. The good news about temptation is this. It is not a sin to be tempted. It becomes sin when you give in to the temptation. Ah, claro ba? Clear ba? It is not sin to be tempted. Temptation is part of reality. It is all around us. Permita tintalon. It is, it only becomes sin 
when you yield to the temptation, mo give in ka sa temptation. When Satan gives an idea in your mind, the Bible calls that temptation. Ha? Kung si Satanas daw maghatag o mga gihunghong niya da sa imong huna-huna, ang Biblia nagasulti nga, kana mo ay temptation, ginatintal ka ba? But when God gives His Word to your mind, the Bible calls that inspiration. Asa man yung gusto? Temptation or inspiration? When you give yourself to an idea, sa imong huna-huna, ikaw ba? Naghatag o huna-huna sa imong kaugalingon? It's a delusion. <laughs> The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every point, just like we are. But he did not sin. Ha? Si Jesus Christ, si Jesus Christo, nga atong ginoo, kitintal man siya when he was here on earth. Pero wala siya nagsala. Kaya nga naman, wala man siya nag-give in sa temptation. So natural ang temptation, kanang magsala ta. Diya na ta mo, kanang mo, mahulog ta, mo, give in ta sa temptation. Mauna, diya ang sala. Temptation is a choice. And every time you choose the right thing, you grow. And every time you choose the wrong thing, you slow or you stumble. Temptation is just an opportunity to grow. Umuabot man siya nga ikaw maka-atubang og mga temptasyon sa kinabuhi. Gialaw na sa Ginoo para kita mutubo sa atong pagtuo o pagsali sa atong Dios. Okay, for example, attraction. Na na-attract ka na ba sa mga butang o sa usa ka babae? Attraction is not a sin. Ha? Ang attraction dili na sa sala. It is the action nga diha ta mahulog sa sala. Attraction is not a sin, but action is. Example, you are attracted to a woman and you express admiration for her. That is not a sin. Na kay nakita nga gwapa nga babae. Ha? Unya ningon kay ka gwapa niya. Mm, ka gwapa gyud niya. Dili na sa lai mo gani nang i-admire. It is when you last for that woman that you sin. Kanang nang lai na yung mong nahuna at itong abayhana, diya ka na magkasala. However, it is, if you are married, no? kung ikaw minyo na, and you express admiration to another woman, naghatag ka admiration sa usa ka babae, In the presence of your wife, na di ay mong misis kauban nimo. That is not temptation. That is tribulation. Avoid that. I cannot control what gets my attention, but I can control what keeps my attention. Let me repeat that. I cannot control what gets my attention, but I can control what keeps my attention. Ikaw na ay choice, anak. Martin Luther said, You cannot keep the birds from flying over your head, but you can definitely keep them from building a nest in your hair. Tama ba? But here is another news. Naman tayo bad news. Naman tayo good news. But here is a great news about temptation. God has promised a way out. This is the great news about temptation. He has promised a way out. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, in the New Living Translation, it says there, Remember that the temptation that come into your life are no different from what others experience. You see that? Kung siya yung ginasulti diya? Nga ka ng mga temptation mo abot sa atong kinabuhi, dili na unique. Sa ato lang, na-experience po na sa uban. It's not unique to you. All temptations are common to humans. Since this is so, there is a common solution to these temptations. 
If we have the same temptation, then we can talk about them with each other and when we do, they lose their power over us. If we keep it a secret, it gets worse. You see, if there will be more confession on temptations, there will be less confession of sin. We share it. Some of us make the excuse nga, Grabe man kaya good tong temptation. Uy, lisod kayo. It was so unique, unique para lang yun sa ako mo nang naglisod yun ko. No, the Bible is clear. All temptations that come to us are common to all men. And so we can share them and share our struggles. And when we do share our struggle, the less power they have over us. If there will be more confession on temptation, there will be less confession of sin. Kaya di man tamahulog. And the Bible continues on to say, And God is faithful. He will keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you cannot stand up against it. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you will not give in to it. Wow, what a promise. This is a promise of God when we are facing temptation. Two promises that we can claim from this passage. He tells us He will strengthen you. He will give you the power. You cannot say, I was powerless. You cannot make that excuse because God says, if you're a child of God, He will give you the strength to say no and resist temptation. And then the second promise is, He will give you an escape route. Tagaan ka niya, way out. Dili ka, mga, dili ka makarason na na corner manggug ko o nang nahulog ko sa sala. No, God will always give you a way out. Sama sa kanta nga, I run to the door, but the door run away. Dilita, dilita, makasulti ni Ana. God will always give an escape way for us to overcome or to resist temptation. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3 says, in the New Century Version, it says that the Lord is faithful and He will give you strength and will protect you from the evil one. Wow! Usually, ang behind aning temptation, si Satanas man. Pero yung undiha sa Biblia, the Lord is faithful, He will give you strength and will protect you sa mga atake ni Satanas pinaagi sa mga temptation. Some Christians are not afraid of temptation. They're afraid of the devil. Why are you still afraid of the devil? When you are in Christ, pag naana si Kristo sa imong kinabuhi, di ka na kinahanglan mahadlok sa yawa. And the Bible says, greater is he who is in you than he is in the world. Mas gamhanan ang balang espiritu nga naa ka na to kaysa yawa nga naa sa kalibutan. Mao ka na ang isulti sa Biblia in 1 John 4 verse 4. You have the Holy Spirit in you and Jesus is with you and God's love surrounds you. Imagine ang triunity, trinity na sa imo. There is no way Satan can get through except if you allow him to suggest in your mind. You see, when you believe his suggestion, si Satan mo suggest raman sa imong unahuna. When you believe his suggestion, that's when he gets to you. Why? You just open a doorway and when you believe and act on his suggestion ni Satanas, you lose. Why? Because you believe his lie. Naminaw man ka niya. O niya, gialaw man ni mo siya ang uh, magpadayon sa paghunghong sa imong unahuna. Mapildi ka gyud. Kay nituo ka sa iyang mga bakak. Sama po na ka na ang nagat, na mga chismis ba? Na mga taong mo duol sa imo. And then, they will tell you bad things about some people. They will gossip. And when the time na makita ni mo ng tawhan na nga giistorya sa imo, lain ang imong pananawa ng nga tao. Why? Gialaw man ni mo tong gossip musulod sa imong mind. And then it ruins you. It ruins your judgment. Kung makita na ni mo tong tao, kay bias ka na. You see, that is what happens. God is going to guide you in your confusion. 
God is going to help you in your temptation. And the third promise of God is this. God promises to support you in trouble. Wow! He is going to protect you in temptation. He is going to support you when you are in trouble. What's the difference between temptation and trouble or trial? Temptation and trial, naman as Biblia. Temptation is inside me. Trouble is outside me. Kuha ninyo? Temptation is nasa sulod. Ang trial nasa gawas. Trouble. Temptation is internal. Trouble is external. Temptation has something to do with my character. Trouble has something to do with my circumstances. In this life, because we live in a broken world, we are going to have temptation and troubles for the rest of our lives. Na na sila. Di na na to na sila malikayan. Niabot na. Maski matigulang ka pa na anang temptation, na anang trouble. Jesus said, na I promise si Jesus ani. Jesus said, in this world, you will have troubles. But be of good courage because I, Jesus said, have overcome the world. Isaiah 43, 2 and 3 in the Living Bible, it says, When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. Unsa daw ang gisulti diha? If you go through deep waters, lalum nga tubig, gibaha ba? And great trouble, kanang great waters that represent great troubles. Ingon ang gino, ayaw ka, look, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, nang malisod nga mga panahon nga murag yun o maglisod kag tabok para maadto sa kaugmaon, sa umaabot, maglisod ka ba, difficult kayo, tabukon. You will not drown. Di ka daw malumos. It doesn't say you won't get wet. You will get wet as you cross the rivers. And it's difficult. But ang promise sa Gino, because He will be with you, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. Which means to say, nga naay mo abot, nga nga init, nga kalisod, fire of oppression. It doesn't say you won't feel the heat. Ma-feel ni mo ang kainit. Pero ang ang saad sa ginoo mo ni, dili ka masunog. For I am the Lord your God. Nindot ka yung asaad kini. Amen ba? He will be with you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 8 and 9, it says here, it says there, we are hard pressed on every side by troubles. Naka-experience na ba mo ka ng pressure nga halos sa tanang side, left and right, up and back? Grabe ang pressure mo na ka ginaipit ba? Gina-squeeze? But the promise is, we are not crushed. Wow, what a beautiful promise. We are perplexed but not driven to despair. We are hunted down but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down but we are not knocked out. Ah, morag si Manny Pacquiao. Pagka knocked down, bangon tayo yun. Ana po, saka, na ay promise ang ginoo sa ato. Manock down man ta, na ay uban sa ato. Manock down. Mawala sa fellowship. Mawala sa pagbasa sa pulong. We fail to read and pray. Knock down. Ayaw ka knock out. Bangon. Bangon mga higsoon kay si Kristo na akanimo. Amen ba? We are hard pressed but we are not crushed. Philippians 4.13 says in the Amplified Version, I have strength for all things in Christ who impose Powers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through Him who infuses inner strength into me. Beautiful promise. God infuses inner strength into us so that we can be empowered to face anything in life and overcome them. The strength I need will come at the time I need it. God will give you that strength. You will be able to overcome any trouble that will come your way because 
in Jesus Christ, you can be an overcomer. You can do all things in Him. Number four promise from God is, is this. God promises to repay those who hurt you. Okay? Katong nagpasakit sa imo, God will will repay repay them for you on your behalf. Romans 12:19 says, "Never avenge yourselves. Leave that to God, for he has said he will repay those who deserve it." Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. Ayo nakakinahanglan mag mag uh, tunglo o mapabilin kasuko o magbalos. Do not avenge. Do not even hold a grudge. But give it to God. Anang imong hurts, na offend ka, give it to God because God has promised, I will repay. God is the God of justice. In fact, justice and righteousness are the foundation of His throne in Psalm 89 verse 14. Your role is to forgive. God's role is to settle the score. The loving thing God will do for us, for you who are being hurt by injustice, by betrayal, malicious gossips, by slander, God is going to settle the score for you. Kanang mga nagadaot sa imo, nagasturya-sturya o dili tinood, God is going to settle the score for you. God will deal with them. So don't get bitter or dwell in grudge. He will settle the score. Wow, what a promise. In Psalm 56:8 it says there in the New Living Translation, "You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book." Wow, what a beautiful promise to memorize. Maybe some of you you need to take note of this. Get hold of this promise. God keeps all your tears in his bottle. And he has recorded each one in his book. He will settle the score. Number 5 promise. God promises to reward your service and generosity. Iya kanang i-reward kanang imong kaayo pag-alagad kaniya og imong paghatag. Mind you, brothers and sisters, God will bless you all the more. The goal of God for our lives is for us to be like Jesus. Amen? We think like Jesus. We feel like Jesus. We talk and walk like Jesus. Mo ni ang gusto sa himoon sa Diyos sa ato. Mahimo kitang sama kay Kristo. Dili may mong Diyos, pero ang kanang pagbati, paglakaw, pagkinabuhi, ug maayo, ug matarong, mapariya kita kang Kristo. And one major characteristic of Jesus' life is that He is unselfish. Dili siya dalo. That is the goal of God for our lives. To be unselfish. Because by nature, we are selfish. Sa tinood lang, kita mga hakog. Makasarili ba? Okay? Ang una ang ginato atong sarili. We are selfish by nature. But, The moment we are born in this world, our selfishness begins to show up. As a baby, you were always thinking just yourself and crying out, "It's me! It's me! It's me! I! I! I want it now!" Moment ng bata, magilak. Ano man? Because the baby wants attention for himself or herself. It is only when they start. Growing, that they learn how to share and how to be taught about sharing with others or giving. Because by nature, we are selfish. It is by nature to think only of self, not to think about others. But you know what? God wants us to become like Jesus. What is Jesus like? In Mark 10:45 it says there, "For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many." 
There are two verbs characterize what it is like to be an authentic follower of Jesus Christ. I want you to take note of the the verse there, no? He came to save and to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The first one is to serve and to give. One of the two verbs, to serve and to give. Because this is what it is like to be unselfish like Jesus. And to be unselfish is what characterizes love and God is love. Love is all about being, serving, and giving. Last is all about getting and getting served. Mona ang difference sa love and last. If you love your, your mother or your parents or someone, it is always serving and giving. If you uh, have last for another person, it's about getting and getting served. God has wired this universe in such a way that your life will never make any sense until you give it away. You are made by God and for God. Hebrews 6 verse 10 says in the New Living Translation, God is not unfair. He will not forget how hard you have worked for Him and how you have shown your love for Him by helping His people as you continue to do. Wow! This is a promise assured by God or given by God to people who are generous, helping continually God's people, God's servant. God is not unfair. He will not forget how hard you have worked for Him. The couple I mentioned earlier that they really work hard cooking for us. This is the promise of God for them. That God will reward them. Luke 16, 9 says, Jesus said, Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends for eternity. In this way, your generosity stores up a reward for you in heaven. You will not only be rewarded here when you are generous, you will have a reward waiting for you in heaven. Number six, promise of God is this. God promises to keep you and me saved until heaven. Huh? Take note of this promise. This is a good promise. God promises to keep you saved until heaven. I don't have to keep myself saved because if, it's, if it is my job to keep myself saved, I won't make it. But you know what? The great assurance that the Bible gives us is this. To keep us saved is God's job not ours. In John 10, 28, it says, Jesus said, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Wow! Jesus promised this, that He has given us eternal life. If you have received Jesus Christ into your life as your Savior and Lord, you have eternal life and He promised you, you will not perish, meaning you will not go to hell. Di pa ka gusto ana, di ka impirno. Saan na ni Kristo? And Jesus never tells a lie. Ug ingon niya diha, no one can snatch you out of my hand. Walay bisang kinsa maski si Satanas dili maka kawat kanimo diha sa kamot sa Ginoo. Ginoo na gud na nagkupot sa imo. Dili ka gyud mawala. No one can snatch you. That's why this is the promise of God. He will save you. From beginning to end. Let me give you an illustration. When my kids were still young, and we we walk on the uh, street, and we are to cross the street. During the time, I hold my two kids. Wala pa man ang ang isa na asa ako misis tung baby, duwa tung wagmay pa. And when they were small, as we crossed the street, I hold them tightly in my hands. Gigunitan ginako sila. 
dili pwede nga mag hintanang dili na ako sila gunitan og maayo kay basig mo dagal ka ka na sa bata mo dagal lang kalit mo, mo, mo ikyas gyud but no i hold them tightly in my hands when crossing the street to protect them from danger and accident if we are born again we cannot make ourselves unborn once our names are written in the book of life It is written with an indelible ink that will not be erased anymore. Wow. Hebrews 10.25 says, Therefore He is able once and forever to save those who come to God through Him and He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. Take note of that. Tanaw na itong maayon na, no? He is able, kinsaman eh, God, Jesus Christ is able once and forever to save those who come to God through Him, through Jesus. And see, Jesus, because He lives forever, He always prays for us on our behalf. Tinsa man, na yung uban sa ato, nagapaan po og santo. Oh, Saint Mary, pray for me. Saint Peter, pray for me. You don't need to, in, to ask Peter or Mary to pray for you. Jesus Himself prays for you. And who is greater? Jesus o kining mga santo? Jesus, He lives forever to intercede with God on your behalf. Wow, what an assurance. In 2 Timothy 2.13, it says, If we are faithless, He will remain faithful, for He cannot disown Himself. You see, this is a very wonderful promise. There are times when we become faithless. Ano bang magduda-duda ta sa, sa ginoo? Pero, Paski sa atong magpagduda-duda, panagsa, mag-doubt ka kung luwas ka na ba, don't worry about that because He remains faithful. Unsa to yung gisaad niya, yun ang buhaton. He cannot disown Himself. Sama po na sa balay. No? Na yung panagsa, ang bata mag-misbehave sa balay. But because they misbehave, di na ni mo sila pakanon. No. As parent, as a good parent, you always you always fulfill your role to them regardless of their behavior. Philippians 1.6 says, Be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Wow! Ang gisugdan sa gino, yan yun ang tiwason. Dili siya ningas kugun. Ha? Nanay magsugod niya, dili humanon. No, God is not like that. When he starts a work in you, kay giluwas kanya, gipakamatyan kanya, iya kag yung dalhon sa langit. Mo na yang promise. Kumplitohon niya na. Hebrews 10:23 says, "Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep what his promise." Wow, God will keep his promise. Every fear is a misunderstanding of who God is. What he has promised Because if you knew what God is really like, and you knew what God has promised, you will not be afraid. Take note of that. Before I end, let me share a prayer which I've read while I was studying on this passage. It is a prayer on trusting God, on counting on God concerning our future. God, I don't know what the future holds, but I'm counting on you. I don't know how the next few days, weeks, and months will unfold, but I'm counting on you to give me the strength and patience I need to get through. I don't know if you will answer my prayers or if you will keep taking me on another ride I wasn't prepared for. I don't know if you will give me a break or another difficult test. But I admit that I am tired. My brain is tired, my heart is tired, and my soul is tired. I'm tired of the same patterns. I'm tired of the same lessons. I'm tired of the same roller coaster. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm ready for the things to change. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm putting my trust in you. And I know that you don't disappoint those who put all their faith in you. I don't know what the future holds, but all I know is that there is nothing you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot fix. 
I don't know what the future holds, but God, I'm counting on you. You know everything that will happen in my life. I know that your plan for my future is good. I will be blessed if I choose to trust Christ and obey Him. And you promise that you will be with me every step of the way. God, I'm counting on you. What a beautiful prayer. Let's pray. Yes, Father, we are counting on you. Thank you for this beautiful promise that you will carry us in realizing the future that you have set before us. We give you praise and we give you glory to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless and without blame before his holy presence to the only wise God who is forever be praised. To him be glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.